Okay, so the Amiga Speedmaster. Now, if you're into Amigas, you know the story of the moon and the space trips and all of that, and we'll cover it, we will. But when you're looking for a Speedmaster, there are some really important little differences, little nuances that you need to know. And here for you are some top trade tips from one of the world's most expert dealers in Amiga Speedmasters. It is... Jonathan Scatchard. I thought he'd forgotten his name there, <laughs> but not to <laughs> You wrote me when you said about world expert. <laughs> you better be good, Jonathan, after that big build-up. Now, I can tell you there is a very exciting Speedmaster here. That looks a really cool collection of bits and pieces. Tell us what we've got. Yeah, it's a really historical Speedmaster. It's known as the Ed White. Ed White was the astronaut that was spotted doing the first spacewalk, wearing this model, this reference everything, when allegedly Amiga spotted it. That's one of our watches. So Amiga didn't even know that the watch was going to the moon? Apparently not. There was 13 watches bought from a store and extensively tested. And the watch that came through all the tests, and it was ridiculous tests, of extremes of temperature on both sides, acceleration, etc. And the Amiga came through. I think it, the movement in this is, is superb. It's the 321 caliber and it's, it's widely regarded as one of Amiga's best. And this is a manual wind movement, which of course, when you're floating around in space, you're not gonna have the movement to wind a self-winding watch. No, perpetual it's movement wouldn't work. Not would really, not as well as this bulletproof, wonderful caliber. I mean, that was just seriously the best marketing for Amiga. I mean, they probably couldn't have even afforded to write a check for that marketing. No, so it just happened no, by, by accident. merit. By I actually merit. didn't know that. Yeah, I think it's, it's there because it is the best at what it does. So t talk us through the differences between a fabulous Speedmaster and something a little more mediocre. Yeah, I don't think we get too mediocre. They're all fabulous in their own way. But Sorry, I didn't need to, <laughs> didn't need to <laughs> insult you there. No. <laughs> This one is pretty much the original, I think, because it was that first one used. Okay, so t tell us about this particular watch you're handling, because I love the paperwork. The paperwork really makes it, and it's really interesting in that we've got a 1965 watch yeah. that wasn't actually sold until 1970. Right. So right. it shows that these things weren't jumping off the shelf, because there was the sports watch then was very specialist. You'd really have to have a reason to buy a sports watch. So it wasn't a particularly popular model? Well, the criteria in those days for a nice watch was that you got a watch for your 21st and you kept it. And if you were lucky, you might get an Amiga Constellation in gold, maybe, which we see lots of. That was the norm. So to go for something like this is really left a field in a lot of ways. You okay. might be they were designed for rally drivers. Right. It first came out in 1957 and it was a rally watch. That's why it's called Speedmaster, sure. which again is very, very niche. Yeah. But obviously it was so good at what it did. And then the whole NASA thing took over. And once Amiga latched onto it and worked with NASA to improve, tweak things, change things to make them safer to use or a little less clumsy, lots of little alterations were done. And this one, and I suppose in a way, is in its most pure state because this was before it became the professional. Okay. Little things to look at which can make a big difference is... The bezel you'll notice here has got a little bit of wear on the top. But that's good, isn't it? it shows, I like shows that. Yes, I like yeah. that. Yeah. But if it had gone back for service, it's odds on that part of the service, Amiga wouldn't like that, so they'd pop you a new bezel on. So would that be normal then? Would Amiga yeah, do that? Yeah, right. most companies did. People like Rolex did. Okay. Probably change the hands, and if the luminosity is gone, probably even change the dial. All oh, right. Because the okay. argument was that it was there, it's a tool watch, it had to be seen, so yeah. you don't want anything worn on it. So authenticity didn't make, you know... No, a, a nobody was thinking about reselling no. those days, it was just a, a good watch that had to be good. All oh, right. So a little crazy little difference is that on the 90, on the tachometer scale here, on the original watch, the little dot that indicated the 90 was above the zero. Right. right. Such a mind, we're talking fraction of a millimetre. It's a bit geeky. By it the way, is, I'm so sorry you about that. Yeah. You should have said that's what it was. Um, the replacement, the service bezel, has the dot next to the zero. 
Right, now I would never know to look for this. No, we, we do and collectors massively do. And you're looking at a dif difference of 1,500 pounds probably you're more. You're kidding me. Dot over 90 bezels that are even worn command good money because this collector wants to take the service bezel off and put an original back on it. Right, okay. So this is what I meant about nuances, how important they are. And if you have a Speedmaster at home, you need to go and get it now. You can pause the video, don't forget to come back, and get yourself a magnifying glass and check out the things that Jonathan is talking about here because there's one difference yep. that means £1,500 added value, which is pretty remarkable. Yes, it is. It is. It's, 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 it's outrageous, really. And the next thing, we're so pleased with this because it's got the original bracelet on it. How can you tell that's original? Because of the numbers on the back. Again, it's a thin bracelet, so if you wore this a lot from 1970, odds yeah. on, it's yeah. stretched, it's worn, it's broken. You get another one from Amiga, which will be a thicker one, probably easier to wear, but it's not original. So Amiga would, in their minds, improve the bracelets as the years went yes, on? Yes, you do see this fairly rapidly. There's a change in things like the okay. bracelet. So the early bracelets are much thinner? Yes. And the little links at the end always got lost when they're pinged off. Yeah. And these are stamped with a number six. <laughs> number six end links are all original and can command. The, the little, as, you're talking about I'm the talking pins. the tiny little end, the little piece of steel that goes between the pin and the, and the head of the watch. That's bonkers beyond it belief. Is, it is, but it's originality. There's so few. So rarity drives up the price as it would with anything. Okay, so that watch you're holding was is absolutely as it was made when new. Yeah, yeah, I'm really pleased. And with that's that. very rare. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I um, hope you're making notes here because I'm a bit confused already. <laughs> but it is really interesting, and I love yeah. paperwork. Well, that's the next thing. Yeah. This never happens. You just never find this. So in 1970, we found the the new owner paid a two pound deposit <laughs> on there. Two quid. That's okay. his deposit of two pounds. And then he came back and he paid the balance, which was £63. So it's a £65 watch. Which wouldn't have been a small amount no, of money. No, no, no. I mean, that would have been more than a week's wage, would it not? It might be even close probably to a month's, month's, yeah, a month's probably wage. Probably a month's wages, which they reckoned that was the same with the Hoyas and everything, about a month's wages okay. to get one of these watches. And that's interesting. Well, what is the average month's wage now? A couple of thousand? About 25000 a year average wage? Yeah, I'm guessing. Be, yeah. So it's probably a couple of thousand pounds equivalent brand new in 1970. Now, come on, everybody wants to know what it's worth today. So fast forward, that two thousand pounds equivalent investment in 70 is worth how much now? We've got fifteen thousand pounds on the watch. That's a very good return, isn't it? It is. And you've it had is. 50 years of yeah. use. <laughs> but it is so vitally important, though, Jonathan, isn't it, to keep hold of paperwork? Oh. Absolutely, because it, they weren't designed to be kept. They really weren't. Maybe you keep the guarantee for, what was it, 12 months back then, and then it was void anyway. So somebody's really looked after it, which is just wonderful and so very, very rare. And again, we've talked about this and, and comparing classic cars and watches, and with classic cars, paperwork, restoration files, old photographs, invoices are vital to yes. its interest, history and value. Yes. And the same applies to a watch. I, th I think the internet's had a big part to play in driving the value as well because of information. Yeah. We didn't really know much about Ed White prior to the internet. There was nothing, there was no books written or anything. There was, right. there was very little information out there. And I do remember selling one of these. I didn't know it was an Ed White. It was just a nice second-hand Amiga Speedmaster. I bought it back recently from the customer that <laughs> I sold it to in 1996. And did you give him a profit? I gave him a good profit on it. And he said, do you remember how much I paid for it? And I said, back then, probably about 500 quid. He said, you're not far off, it was 450. Oh, but you're just looking then, there's only one way yeah. to sell it, that's in the shop window. That's there's right. no internet, the internet's changed everything. And for the good, because we've now got this wonderful information that we can see just how rare it is. We've got the connection with Ed White and everything else with NASA. Yeah. And it's all out there. And over the last 10 years, say, I mean, we know it's increased from the equivalent of 2,000, <coughs> 15,000, but in the last 10 years, how have these watches done? Done extremely well, you know, just, um, we've just gone past the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, so it's had a lot more publicity. Amiga are driving a lot of that publicity as well, bringing out limited editions every year. The Speedmaster is a huge part of their, yeah. their brand now, so people are used to seeing it. And so you look at it and think, yeah, I'd actually like one that was pre-moon. Wow. 
pre-moon means that the back is plain. After okay. the landing, they really, really did ramp it up and they put that the enameled on the case back that this watch is flight qualified by NASA, the first watch worn on the oh, moon. I see. Okay. So you can see very easily when it's pre-70 or, or, or afterwards. So. And, and that, that's, that's the pre? Yeah, this that's is 65, that's, this is 65, yes. very, very... Isn't very it true. remarkable how that watch is so desirable now, worth £15,000, when in 1965, it took them five years to sell the thing? Yeah. It's odd, isn't it? It is, but that's just the way... This, this would be seen as a huge watch as well. Yeah, it would, because it would it's unusual. big now, and, yeah. and watches have really grown. It would have been very unusual to wear something like that. I think you would have probably been a professional pilot or something yeah. that would need, would need this. And, and what about maintenance and service costs today? Is it an everyday watch? Can you wear it every day? Absolutely, everyday watch. Very easy to service, wonderful movement, parts still available. Yeah. You know, just a great investment. And service regularity? We say about five years now. You know, the, the oils that they're using now is, 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 it doesn't lubricate the same way as the old ones where they used to dry out. Yeah. This, this doesn't yeah. the same way, so you can you can usually get about five years out of it. Fantastic. So 2,000 new equivalent, 15,000 now. Next 10 years, what's your prediction? Can only go up. They're, they're, they're rare things, and there's so much demand for them. People love them. Some people collect only Speedmasters. Really? Yeah, and you can do. There's so many differences. And they will know those little nuances to oh. look out for. Yeah, there's, there's books written just about this watch with, with so much detail. It's incredible. And luckily for you, you now have a couple of top trade tips here from Jonathan. This is information that he doesn't ordinarily share. <laughs> he doesn't know this has been filmed. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> anyway, it's been great. Thank you very much for tuning in. Come back again. I'm sure you're going to see Jonathan again with uh, another one of his yes, fabulous Yes, I've got another idea for something to show you. So. Brilliant. Okay, so from me, David Harper, and from me, Jonathan Scatchard. Cheerio. Bye-bye.